Hey, this is Kyle from EssentialDeveloper.com. In this video, you're gonna learn how to set up a continuous integration server and add the famous continuous integration badge to your project, like this one here. So let's go. All right. So we are going to set up our GitHub repository with a continuous integration server. And the easiest way to do it is to go to GitHub Marketplace. As you can see, there's a link here in the navigation bar. Let me zoom a little bit. So in categories, we can go to continuous integration and you have a bunch of choices. We are not vouching for any specific one, but for this video, we're going to be using Travis CI. As you can see, they support macOS and iOS and it's free for open source projects on GitHub, which is perfect for us right now. So let's install it. So the project is not in my personal account. It's in the Essential Developer account. So we need to select the organization. It's going to ask if I want to add to all repositories. No, I'm going to select the ones I want. The quiz app. Perfect. If you're doing this for your company, Please be sure to check if you have the permissions to do so. We're probably going to have to ask your legal team to check Travis CI terms and conditions, privacy policy, and all of that. Don't just install things on your projects. But for our open source project, it's okay. So let's carry on. And here we are. We are redirected now to Travis CI, where you have to sign in with the same GitHub account. Great. Let me authorize this. And again, I've checked all of the permissions and terms and conditions. So I recommend you do the same before you use such a service. Okay, so looks like it's all set up. Let's go to the settings. Okay, so as you can see, I don't have any builds yet, but it's set up. So every push to any branch will trigger the Travis CI build and also for pull requests. So that looks good. Now it's time for us to configure our project. So let's go to help. Docs. I recommend all the getting started tutorials. It's very helpful. But we are going to jump to CI environment reference OS 10. And let's see what we need. So first of all, we need to create a YAML file to tell Travis how to treat our repository. So here we're going to set all the configurations, OS, language type, Xcode version, and all of that. Everything we need to create a virtual machine that looks very close to our machine. So we can build and run all our tests and get reliable results. So let's create a YAML file. As you can see, I'm in the root of the project. So first thing, let's tell it to run it on OS 10. We want the latest Xcode, so let's use the latest image. Also, let's set up the language, Swift. And now we can set up a script. And in this video, we're going to be using Xcode build to build and test our application. So if you go back to the command line, you can find the documentation for Xcode build. As you can see, we can select the project we want to run, the scheme, the destination. You can also select a workspace and much more. So be sure to check the documentation and let's give it a try. Let's try to build a project. First of all, I want to make sure I clean the project, then I build and test. In our case, we are using a workspace. Our scheme for the application is called Quiz App. We want to run it on the simulator. Now we can define a specific simulator. Let's choose platform, iOS simulator, OS 11.3, name, let's say iPhone 8. Yeah, that should be fine for now. We can also pass some build settings, for example, only active arcs. No, we can also tell it that we don't need to code sign. And let's see if I can run this command. Okay, we got an error. Apparently I added the wrong OS type. Let me check my command again. Yep, I set 11.3, but it should be 0.4. Let's try again. Okay, now it's building. And running the tests and it's done. Perfect. So this is the command we want. So let's copy the command 
and paste it on our script. Great, let's save this and let's have a look at our quiz app scheme to see which tests are actually running. There we are. You can select our scheme, edit, you can go to tests. And as you can see, we are running only the quiz app tests, but I would like to run the engine tests as well. And we could add it here, but I quite like that I have separate schemes during development. So what we can do is to create a new scheme for our CI server. So let's cancel this. Let's select duplicate scheme and automatically direct us here to name the scheme. Let's call it CI, looks like a good name. There it is. Let's edit, tests. Now let's add the quiz engine iOS tests. Okay, make sure to select shared. So this scheme is gonna be added to the shared data that you can commit and push to your Git repo. So the server can also see and use this scheme. You can also go to manage schemes. There it is, perfect. So let's go back to the command line. Let's try to run the same command with the CI scheme. There it is. You run the quiz engine iOS tests and the quiz app tests. They pass. Perfect. So let's update our script to use the CI scheme, save, and let's commit. As you can see, we now have shared data because of the new scheme. So first of all, let's create a branch. Great. So let's now break down those changes into commits. First of all, let's add the Travis YAML file. Okay, there it is, staged. So let's commit, add Travis CI YAML config. Great. Now let's see what's left. So everything left is about the scheme and the new shared data. So let's commit all of them. Create a new scheme for the CI server. Let's check if we have anything else to commit. No, all clean. Let's clear this and let's push the changes and see what happens. So let's go back to GitHub. Here we can see our branch. Let's create a pull request. Let's call this setup CI and create. And if we scroll down, we can see that now we have some checks on our branch. As you can see, Travis is gonna run our build script and give us feedback here. And we can also go to details and see what's going on. So here you can see the configuration we selected, the language Swift, macOS, Xcode 9.4. And here's the script we are running. That looks great. If you click on the build link, you go to the Travis website and here you can see it's in the queue and it actually started running. So let's wait and see. And it's done. All right. Well, we took it five minutes to finish and it's probably because that's a free version and it's running on limited resources. Because it's normally much faster than that. The problem is that it needs to run a VM, set up the environment, but it's working and it's green. Let's have a look at GitHub. As you can see, all the checks have passed. We can expand this here and there it is. Looks like we are all set up. But as promised in the beginning of the video, we are going to set the famous build badge to our project. So let's go back to the portal. Where is it? There it is. Well, it still says unknown, probably because we need to merge this to master first. There it is. Let's select markdown because we're gonna add this to our readme file. Great. Copy this and let's edit our readme file. Let's use Sublime. Great, let's do it right here. Just paste the markdown, save. Let's commit this. Okay, just a readme change. So edit CI build status badge. Yeah, that looks appropriate. Commit, push. And if we go back to our repo, as you can see, since I pushed new changes, CI is gonna run the script again to guarantee I didn't break anything. Okay, I'm happy with those changes, so let's ask Mike to reveal the branch and merge. So you can see the history on GitHub. All of this is public. 
Again, just want to say that Travis CI might not be the right choice for you. So please have a look at other options. Don't forget to check the description. We always add some extra material in there. And we hope you enjoyed this video and learned something today. Don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time. Thank you.